So finally, what I'd like to talk about is I'd like to talk about the notion of the directional derivative. The directional derivative is kind of like a partial derivative. We had partial derivatives that told us how a function changes if we move in one particular direction. And the directional derivative is going to do the same thing, except it's not going to assume we're just kind of moving all along a line in the x direction or moving along a line in the y direction. So for taking a directional derivative, we need two things. The first thing we need is a real valued function. And the second thing we need is a unit vector that tells us a direction where we're going to be taking this derivative. And the directional derivative of g at this point tells us how fast the function is changing if we go in that direction at unit speed. And it has a definition. It's the limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h times this unit vector minus g of x divided by h. So it has a limit definition. It tells us kind of the slope as we go out along that line in the direction of u. And the chain rule that we analyzed before says that the directional derivative is very concrete. It's the dot product of this vector u, the unit vector, times the gradient g of, x, of g of x. So special cases of the directional derivative include the derivatives in the x direction or the y direction or so on. So the vector 1, 0 is a unit vector and the vector 0, 1 is a unit vector. So if I have a function g, I could take the directional derivative in the direction of 1, 0. And that would be the same thing as the partial derivative with respect to x. Or I could take the derivative of g in the direction of 0, 1. That would be the same as taking the partial derivative with respect to y. Or if I had a function of three variables, then I could take the partial derivatives of, with respect to x, y, and z, and those would correspond to the i, j, and k partial derivatives in the sense of a directional derivative. Now, the formula for the dot product in terms of the lengths of the two input vectors and the angle between them says that the directional derivative is actually just given by the length of the gradient times the cosine of the angle made between our vector u. So this is the angle between this unit vector u and the gradient vector grad g. So the cosine of this angle is always between minus one and one because cosine of anything is always between minus one and one. And so in this formula for the directional derivative, the biggest possible that the directional derivative could be is equal to the length of the gradient. And that only happens when the cosine is equal to one or equivalently, the angle is equal to zero. So the only possible way that we get the biggest possible directional derivative is if we're moving exactly in the same direction as the gradient. And correspondingly, the only way we get the smallest possible is if cosine is equal to negative one. And so we get the smallest possible directional derivative in the direction opposite the directional derivative. So if we think about things in terms of directional derivatives, this says that if we've got a function g and we've got a parameterized curve c of t moving through space, then the rate of change of g at that point is the same thing as the directional derivative of g in that direction times the speed. So the faster we go, the faster the function changes. And the closer we are to the gradient vector, the more we're pointing in the direction of the gradient vector, the faster the function is going to change as well. So as an example, here's a function of three variables. g of x, y, z is equal to x squared plus y squared minus z squared. If we calculate its gradient, we just take the partial derivatives one by one by one. That's 2x, 2y, and minus 2z. 
and at any position we could calculate its gradient. So at the position 101, for example, we could calculate its gradient and we get the vector 20 minus 2, whose length is the square root of 8. So there's a particular direction, namely the direction of 101, where that function is changing at speed square root 8. If we go in the opposite direction, we get speed minus square root 8. But if we do something in between, we could get directional derivatives. So we can pick this unit vector, one third, two thirds, two thirds. The directional derivative in that direction is the dot product of our gradient 202 with our unit vector, and that gives us minus two thirds. So it's very, very concrete to be able to calculate this and just remembering the physical interpretation of what the directional derivative is uh, can help us out a lot when we're thinking about directional derivatives.